Today we're going to talk a little bit more about our tightening torque uh, for all of our collet chuck series. So today we're going to talk about some of the, the advantages of, of some of our torque limiting devices. So to just go over the, the basics that, that we're looking for for a starting place comes into the, the insertion of that cutting tool into these collet chucks. Um, these are reminders of good practices and something that, that should really be looked at carefully if you are doing any of these things. Um, number one is the minimum insertion length. Um, with any collet chuck from any vendor, you want to make sure that the round part of the shank of the cutting tool is completely through the ground section of the collet. So if you, if you short it too much and you push that drill in too deep and try to clamp on, on the reduced area past the shank, you're going to get some dents and some damage to the collet itself. Same, same applies if you short the tool into the collet and you don't put it all the way through that ground section. It'll form a wear mark in a place where the, the, the collet's been deformed permanently and you'll never get the same gripping or uh, run out accuracy ever again with that collet. So making sure that the tool is inserted fully through that ground section is, is rule number one. Uh, rule number two is don't use tools with flats on them in collets. Uh, really what, what happens is you create a, a void inside that collet where the, the collet is trying to compress against the shank of the tool that's not there. And you run into some of the same problems. So assuming you have the shank all the way through the ground section and now you clamp with a welded flat tool in there, it'll dent the collet. And again, you'll, you'll ruin the collet and decrease your gripping strength and cause yourself all kinds of headaches. So no matter what you do, these two rules will, will probably get you the most bang for your buck, assuming that you're, you're not already following them anyway. Um, the other thing to make sure you're doing every time is a thorough cleaning. Uh, just loosening the chuck, removing the, the cutting tool and replacing the cutting tool is generally not enough. Uh, you really need to take the nut off the holder, the collet out of the nut, and clean both the tool holder body the nut and the collet before reassembling. There's just too much swarf uh, floating around in collets and, and floating around in the shop that any of those little pieces that get trapped in between that collet bore and the collet or in between the tool and the, and the collet will cause you run out issues and potentially early tool breakage or, or faster wear. And then finally, as you're getting these things together, it is really important to not over torque tool holders. Uh, some of these are pretty extreme examples, but you want to get away from the, the torque bars. You want to make sure that you're not getting to a point of bending wrenches because you'll wind up breaking components of the tool. But more generally, the types of damage we'll, we'll see from people over tightening is in the top right corner there. It's a little hard to see potentially, but it's cracked. So if you over tighten a, a collet chuck body, that taper of the collet is going to try to force open the, the tool holder body and you'll wind up with those hairline cracks where we can tell that the, the tool has been over tightened. So of all these things, making sure that, that you're protecting your, your quality equipment is probably at the forefront. Um, now there's going to be a couple terms I'm using today and just wanted to define those quick. Uh, we have our, our mega chuck program here at Big Kaiser. Um, whenever I'm referring to mega chucks, I'm referring to a tool holder that's been finished after heat treat for high precision and high speed applications. Um, the other thing that, that this has done is it's allowed us to remove the notches from the nuts for clamping. Now, this does a couple things for us. Uh, number one, it eliminates the notches to cause uh, vibration and balance and, uh, and issues at high speeds. Uh, even though they're small notches, they still will create um, uh, wind resistance and can, can actually cause you more problems at high speed. The other thing that, that this does is it allows us to grip that nut all the way around 360 while we're going ahead and tightening it. Uh, this, this change away from the, the single point hook spanner where you're hooking into the collet 
or the nut and, and dragging from uh, not quite 180 degrees around uh, really balances out the forces that we're applying when clamping and, and makes the whole system more stable. So when we're talking about mega chucks, and I'll say that a lot, it's more about the ground surfaces on the outside of the nut as well as the tool. Now the, the biggest advantage that we have with our collet chuck programs come through this bearing nut. So we've got the notch free design to, to really smooth out that, uh, that clamping force. But then inside each nut, we have a, a single bearing race um, with ball bearings that allow that to sit still as the tool is being clamped. Um, along with that, there's an exclusive mega wrench that's a one-way clutch bearing wrench that I'm going to show you here in a little bit that grabs onto the outside for, for clamping. And really the goal with that bearing nut is to make sure that we're not twisting the collet when we're, when we're clamping. With the traditional solid steel single piece clamping nuts, as you tighten, the, the frictional forces of that rotation drag across the face of the collet as well as the threads of the collet. So with, with that style of nut, you'll see a little twisting, a little imparting of, of run out as you, as you finally get that final tightening done. But more importantly, it, it also wears away at your tools and your collets. So after about 500 clamping cycles, um, our new baby collets on the left look pretty new and, and untouched. Uh, an ER collet with, clamped with just a solid nut starts to show some pretty heavy wear marks from that, that nut dragging across that surface of the collet. Now, um, as you start to wear collets, um, you'll also start to wear the tool holders themselves. Uh, without that, that bearing and the amount of torque required on a solid nut, you start to wear the threads themselves as well. So it's not just damaging the the collets, but it's damaging the threads on the tool holder and the nut. So it's very important to, to keep this under your consideration, more specifically because of how it affects your tool life. As those collets and threads wear, you'll see a 30 to 40 percent decrease in gripping strength and about 30 to 40 percent more run out. So these things will, will wear out and everything will be working great for you up front and then as time goes and you get through 500, 1,000 tool changes, things are getting out of control and it's, it's probably based on tool holder wear and collet wear. So with a, a very accurate bearing style nut, ground threads on our tool holders and our repeatability, um, we do a lot of tests like this where we take the tool holder completely apart and reassemble it five times and we're getting right within our, our three micron at four times diameter target. So, in order to tighten our, our program, we have what we call the mega wrenches. And they come in three different styles. We have our original mega wrench, an analog torque wrench, and a digital torque wrench. So we have some options to control that tightening torque. Now with this, there's different torque ranges for different size collets. And you'll see this not from only Big Kaiser, but from other brands as well. Uh, generally speaking, it's the three millimeter eighth inch Smaller tools require much less clamping strength than the full size that that tool holder is capable of holding. So when you're, you're working with smaller tools, it's important to recognize that there may be a lower torque value uh, specifically for that size tool. So always check your charts and make sure you're looking at the, uh, the correct torque values as you're getting ready to set these. The latest innovation from, from Big Daishoa is this new torque fit. So what this does is it, it takes all of the, the different torque wrenches and torque sizes and, and all that stuff and puts it together into a single device that's mounted to the table. <clears throat> now the torque sensing mechanism is actually inside the unit so it's just a drop-in style. Use your traditional standard wrench and the display will tell you how much torque you're applying. So not only is this capable of doing all of our big Daishoa collet chuck series, but it also has a blank user mode so that you can use it with other tool holder types as well. Now they come in two different sizes. There's a, a 50 taper size and a four smaller size. Uh, so the unit itself has got uh, different adapters that can be dropped in on top. So if you're a shop 
has uh, 40 and 50 taper holders, you'd probably go with the bigger one. If you've got a shop that's more of the BT30, Cat 40, maybe the smaller HSK sizes, then you'll be looking at the smaller one. But you can use the same device no matter what the taper type. And again, our unit's got all these, these programmed in there. We're up to a maximum of 80 Newton meters on this. Uh, so it may not be capable of handling the very largest collet chucks at, with a solid steel nut, but certainly capable of doing all of our tool holder styles with the bearing nuts. It's a pretty simple operation. I'm going to take you through it real quick. I'm pretty much just going to select the type of product and the size, and it's going to be ready to go. Um, peak holes and uh, buzzers and uh, an error button that will tell you if you've gone too far, but I'll kind of take you through that quick. Let me switch over to this other camera and we'll talk a little bit about the torque fit. So today uh, I'm using just round test bars so I can, I can be careful with my hands. But this is a Mega 20N tool holder with a 16 millimeter tool holder or tool in it. And this is our Mega wrench. So one size lock and the other's open. And the nice thing about this, this torque fit is it does have a hardened steel pin inside to resist rotation. So when I go ahead, I can go ahead and open this within this device and not worry about damaging it. So get that loose. What we'll do is go ahead and put our, our tool holder in there. With a tool, hand tight, I'm just going to zero out my device, turn to the lock, and as I tighten, I get three solid beeps, and that's it. So that was about 50 Newton meters, uh, and that's all the tightening torque that's required for our new baby uh, size 20 to clamp up to a 20 millimeter tool holder. It looks pretty light. Um, compared to what, what I see in a lot of shops, but that's, what, that's why we're having this conversation. So it doesn't require uh, jerking or pushing or pulling. It's just a nice, smooth finish, and you're done. No hammers, no jerking, and you're going to get the best gripping strength and the best runout accuracy if you just let, leave that alone. Again, this is a, uh, a modular device, so the tool holder will stay on the table. I've got a simple thumb screw. You can take out the 40 taper and, and change that over to a 30 taper. And we have devices to hold HSK and CAPTO as well. Um, now those devices, those tops are more like our some of our other tool holder varieties here. Um, one of them being the Combi Grip tool holder. So this assembly device takes pretty much the same uh, needle bearing design, the one-way bearing, and puts it into a, a base stand. So for tool holders like the HSK E-Series, where there's no notches, no grooves, no, no way to locate this, there's two options. You either clamp as hard as you can on the outside of this and hope that it doesn't slip, or we can get, get a tool holder like this, where as you turn it, it locks up inside this bearing so you can do both loosening and tightening on these types of holders without any notches. Now the nice thing about some of these these shorter dual contact style holders is it will also work with Capto. So I can put a C4 in the same basic adapter as the HSK E40. Now again we have versions of this that are built for adaption into either our cast iron base stands for quick assembly or can be used directly into the, the torque fit. Now the last type of, of tool assembly device that we have is the Tool Pro. And this is one of my favorite tool assembly devices available, um, mainly because it's, it's modular in design and it's, it's very practical uh, for tightening and loosening. So what it is is there's a button on the back that allows me to switch out the taper pot itself so the base gets mounted and, and locked onto the table and I can quickly switch to different taper types. And it's also got a retractable detent that will lock into the tool holder and this is really where this this product shines is because it's got the big button on top so I can index this 
every 45 degrees all the way around. So it gives me a couple options for things, uh, specifically when we're looking to, to tighten or loosen. Um, what I can do is, get, is use gravity to help me out with this. So most of the time in the upright position, if you're trying to set a tool length, it's just going to keep falling into the tool and you've got to get multiple hands and a scale to try to rough set it. With a style like this, um, you know, you can tighten it by hand, use your other hand to, to pull a scale to, to get some base setting. And then finally, when you get, get ready to tighten, you're working with gravity. So you're never trying to pull or fight, fight the tool holder. And then when it's time to take the tool apart, I can flip it around and also use gravity to make assembling and disassembling these tools much easier. Now with Tool Pro, we can also get this all the way around so that we can use our, our torque wrenches to make sure that the pull stud is also torqued in properly. Now with, with pull studs, um, there's a, a couple different uh, recommendations from different uh, manufacturers of pull studs. And I would recommend that you always follow of the tool holder manufacturer and their requested tightening torque for a pull stud. Um, when these tool holders are made, made, they are ground in such a way that they are expected to have a bolt pushing against the back face of that tool at their specific torque setting. So our, our recommendations may be slightly different than other brands, but it's our, our recommendation that you always follow whichever manufacturer of the tool holder itself is recommending for pull stud torque. So always torque down your pull studs and always torque down your, your tool holders. And then finally, um, the other device that I just wanted to show quickly is our digital torque handle. Um, if, you're, if you're looking for a, a more portable version of a, of a torque limiting wrench, this one actually comes with uh, replaceable tips so we can get to all the different size collet checks that we offer. And then I can use the same style tool holder to get that torqued. So between those three tool assembly types, uh, we generally find one or the other that, that will fit your shop's profile. But it gives you a very stable place to put tools together to make sure that they're, they're torqued down properly and cleaned properly. Um, the combi grip for the HSK and the, the small polygons uh, to the tooling mate that lifts that, that program up a little bit to give you some room to get underneath for, um, for either coolant tubes or retention knobs. And finally to the Tool Pro heavy duty indexing system that gives you a lot more versatility and access to all the different sides of the, of the tool holder. And most importantly, um, try to use long smooth pulls for, for any wrenches and or um, torque wrenches. You never want to try to hammer on anything. It always makes me sad when I go into shops and see somebody assembling one of our brand new beautiful tool holders and they get out the dead blow and a wrench and just knock around that pull stud to get it in place. Uh, torquing that pull stud is very important to the, the accuracy and the life of that spindle. Um, so stay away from the hammers and the extended bars. And lastly, um, cleaning is ultra important for collet chuck assembly. Uh, any swerf inside the collet bore or in the nut will cause you a lot of heartache. So making sure that you're cleaning both the, the insides of the tapers, whether it's the tapered type uh, alpha taper cleaners or one of our straight versions for hydraulic or shrink in the alpha wiper program or the TK cleaner for the larger size. Um, getting into those small crevices and making sure that the tool holders are clean uh, and torqued properly will give you better repeatability and better tool life overall.